You've been here for almost your entire working life. Is there any job that you didn't get that you would have liked to have done? The only thing that I wish that I could have done is I wish I could have been more involved in the day-to-day -day building of projectors and so on for a longer period of time. I'm sorry that I got kicked up into administration, I guess is one way of putting it. My name is Stephen Brooks Craig. I was born in San Francisco at Children's Hospital in 1936. I lived in Berkeley from there until I joined the Army when I was 19 years old. I was interested in mechanical things from the very earliest that I can remember. And in fact, I made a scrapbook when I was four of car pictures. Around 1960, the summer of 1960, I was a student at Heels College in San Francisco and a phone call came in that I happened to answer saying from the chief technician in the plant time thing they needed a technician. And I said, oh, I'd love to do that. So I came out and applied and I got the job. I settled right into building optical mechanical projectors for the planetarium almost immediately. I stayed in the shop at any time there was a planetarium show going on so that if there was a problem, we could be called on. They had a bell they rang and you'd run up and fix whatever didn't work. Bulbs would burn out during a show and we had so few projectors that if one went out, you really needed to fix it. So we would actually fix things right there. They'd interrupt the show and we'd get a flashlight and change a light bulb and be back in action. The planetarium star projector. This is an instrument that has thousands of parts in it and is used 40, 50, 60 hours a week. If you compare it, for instance, to an automobile, it would be very much like a taxi cab in, it, in terms of how much it's used. So that's an opportunity for a lot of things to wear. The instrument shop and the planetarium staff were always integrated. Early on in the 1950s and into the 1960s, when I was here, we, were, we had a number of products that we were regularly manufacturing. Foucault pendulums being the biggest and heaviest of, of the products, and we made the first Foucault pendulum for this museum. I think we probably have made more than 100 of these pendulums, and they're all over the world. We made other things for the exhibits department here. Everybody helped wherever they could. It was very much a family operation. There were a lot of characters. We had what's called a lunch bunch, and that attracted some very interesting people. In 69, the shop superintendent passed away. Dr. Lindsay called me into his office and said, Steve, I want you to be the superintendent of the building and instrument shop. And I said, well, you know, I'm really having a good time doing projectors in the planetarium, and I like my job, and I wasn't anxious for another job. He looked at me and he said, Steve, if you don't want to take this job, I'm going to hire somebody you don't like and you're going to work for him. And I said, well, if you put it that way, <laughs> I think I'll take the job. My style of administration has always been one of getting input from everybody on my staff and listening and not letting my own personal opinion get in the way of progress. I think I was very good at running the shop. I'm very good at coordinating big projects like rebuilding the star projector, installing the automation system. I had been asked actually in 1976 by Dr. Lindsay to be the planetarium director. I turned the job down at that time. In 1982, I accepted the job. I think that running a planetarium is not any different than running a shop. It's a matter of making sure that all the different things come together at the right time. I have been in the planetarium many, many times when you have sunset and the stars start coming on one at a time and, and you'll see people say, oh, look at that, what's that? You know, the first star that you see, make a wish. <laughs> anyway, there are a lot of other nice people. I think the, the, the friendships and the camaraderie of the whole museum was what I liked.